Rachel, where do you feel like you fit into to all this? The global protests, uh, the calls for change, has it had an impact on you and made you think differently about things or, or spurred you into action? Um, I think for everybody, really, I think for most people, you're looking at it and saying, like Leanne's just said, this is a time to actually speak out about things that, that possibly you've never spoke before. It's, you know, you, you enough is enough. And, you know, if we if we all stay quiet, if we all accept, then then nothing will change. So it's now the time to to make a change. And if we don't speak out, if we don't talk about it, if we don't open up awkward conversations, then, you know, it's going to be extremely difficult to change what is happening. And I think everybody, no matter what colour you are, is is upset and you know disappointed and disgraced and shocked at what they're seeing that's happening at the moment um just because it's been brought to light leanne now let's let's hone in on football you have 50 caps for england you've played for many clubs around the world so what's been your experience with racism in football in particular yeah you know i've i've been blessed and lucky to have played in italy and spain and cyprus and to be honest, yes, like when I first moved to Spain about eight years ago, that I lived in a little small town outside of Barcelona and I used to get some funny stares, some funny looks, some comments, and I didn't quite speak the language at that point. Um, I'm not fluent now, but, you know, like you can tell when someone's not saying stuff that's very nice to you. And it wasn't until people realised that I was a footballer that they started to become a bit nicer. And, and that's the thing that I don't like, you know, it's the same as I keep bringing up, but Leona Lewis said yesterday she had a situation with her father where she was followed around the shop and it would be a me to her. And then they realised she was a singer and they started apologising. And she said, well, it's not really got anything to do with my profession. I'm a human. And I think, you know, for me, when I've lived in Spain, there's definitely been times where, and in Italy, where you get followed, you get looked, you go around the shop, they're thinking, who is this? And then once they found that I played for Juventus, they kind of then changed the way they are. And that's not really the right thing to do. Do you know what I mean? Everybody should be treated equally and it shouldn't be a base upon your profession, how much respect you get. So I certainly face situations where, you know, people have certainly looked at me as if to say, who is this? Why are they here? And it, it could be to do with race. It can be to do with sexuality. I just don't look like everybody else in a lot of the places that I live. So there's some funny stares in itself, you know, because of that reason. But at the same time, you know, that feeling of when someone's racist towards you or prejudiced, it's a feeling that you get it's a feeling you get in your stomach and it's a feeling that you just can't explain. You know, so when someone says to me, how do you know they're being racist? You just know because you get that sick feeling in your stomach that you, you don't really want to have to explain, to be honest. Yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. I think many people see it as, well, I haven't thrown a banana, so I'm not racist. But actually, it sometimes can be quite insidious. It can be sometimes quite hidden. But as black people, we know when we're experiencing it. Um, Sue, I, I want to thank you for, for being, for wanting to be a, a part of this, because I think everyone has a role to play. And it's important, too, that people that aren't black um, stand up and talk about their experiences as well. Um, now, for you, when you were playing, you played with a handful of black players throughout your career. Were you ever aware of any racism that your teammates might have been experiencing? Do you know, I didn't. And I, I was unaware of it. And, and that now makes me feel bad that, that I didn't see it because I think if I had, I would have wanted to have, have helped my teammates and, and supported them. You know, I hear stories in the men's game of, of maybe things that have been said or, or things that have been done. But in all of my time playing, I don't actually remember that happening. But when you hear stories like what Leanne's just spoken about then, I just probably wasn't aware of it. And, and again, like I say, that makes me feel bad and makes me think that I should have done more. Yeah. Rachel, you obviously played alongside Sue. Talk to me about the racism you experienced when you came to prominence, I guess, in, in, in the uh, late 90s when you were playing compared to the 2000s. Was there a difference in the level of racism? Has it, did it change throughout your career? Did it get better? Did it get worse? Um, see, I, I, I can't remember exactly years, um, when this happened, it was probably, it was probably the 2000s where there was, uh, blatant racism. Uh, they, there might have been some, you know, stuff where Leanne, what Leanne was discussing, things where you feel uncomfortable. Um, I think uh, me as myself, I used to have people say something about me or say something and I used to, 
like for instance, um, a coach would say, oh, just run at them, use your speed. And I would think to myself, you know, in that, it, are they being racist because people look at black players and, and just look at the athletic side of them? Or uh, are they are they looking at me and thinking, well, she is quick, so I should use my speed. So I kind of, although I felt uncomfortable, I thought, well, I am quick. So maybe I, I didn't really know how to take it and where to guide by it and what to do. So that for me, I, I didn't. A part of me felt it was racist, but I never spoke out to anybody about that. I just sometimes wanted to to show that I was better than just speed. Um, there was blatant racism, and that was uh, when I when I sort of had that was playing for Arsenal in the Champions League. We played against a, a Spanish side, uh, Real Vallecano, um, and yeah, a, a guy in the crowd was every time I got the ball. I didn't notice at first because you expect the opposition fans to boo you or to shout stuff. It, it's just, you know, that's part of football. Um, but I realised that the booing then was actually sort of a monkey chant. Um, and then I took a throw in, being a winger, I was on that side. I, I picked the ball up to take a throw in and he chucked like a baguette at me. Um, so, and, and just was really like, like looking at somebody and seeing the anger and the hatred in his, in his face. And I was thinking, I've never met this guy before. I don't under, I was just more shocked and didn't understand um, why someone would think like that. I've, I've seen it, you know, where black players, older black players have talked about it, but to have that, you know, done to yourself, it was, I don't know, just weird. I can't really explain it. I was just, shock was probably the overriding sort of emotion um that I, I i sort of felt i'm not even sure that that half of my teammates that were playing that day actually realized that was happening um i remember walking off at half time their manager um apologizing me speaking to the ref and saying you know pointing out who it was and just saying that it just totally put me off my game we were losing as well, so I think there was a bit of frustration from from losing and anger. And the one thing I do remember is that uh, Kira Grant, who is a white Irish player, she was enraged by it as well. Um, and that, to me, made me feel really, I suppose, proud of my team because it, although it was uh, pointed at me, the the it affected other players. Uh, we lost that game, which was disappointing. But in the rematch back at Warren Wood, I, I definitely for me, I can't say how other people felt, but definitely for me, that 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 spurred me on. That gave me a little bit extra that I I didn't want them to win. Leanne, can you? I guess does that feel like a, a similar uh, a, a situation that you can sympathise with? As, as have you had that type of experience as well? Do you know what was interesting when you actually just sharing that story? Another story actually came to me because I obviously played in Spain for a year because I remember there was actually a player and she was the only black player on the team. She had a nickname that I won't say, but that was her nickname. And I couldn't quite believe that was her nickname that she thought that they thought that was OK and a sign of endearment. And I remember I spoke to my coach and I said to him, we were at dinner and it wasn't like a confrontational conversation. I just said, why do you think, why do people do this in Spain where there's monkey chants and there's like all these things? And, and he simply said to me, you know, we don't, we, we don't want them to do well. So we do these things and they, they see it as a sign of, um, like they said, it would be like if you had a huge, they compared it to this, no joke, right? They compared to, if you had a huge spot on your head, they would say, look at that big spot on your head. So I said, so you're saying that a black person's color of their skin is a sign of weakness. Because he said we're going to make fun of their weakness and he didn't see it as even being anything near racist to me i don't think he was necessarily racist but it's the racist biases and the subconscious racism that i think i've faced in my career that you know for example why has someone like yanks never been the england captain why has someone like myself never been put forward to be a captain do you know what i mean because we don't fit those stereotypes of what people are looking for now why is that why why is that and sue made a point earlier and she was saying you know she feels like she could have done more. And it's not really about that, Sue. So I don't want you to ever feel like you could have done more for us because Sue is one of the nicest people, honestly, I've genuinely ever come across. She was my first roommate in England. 
absolutely unbelievable person. But there are times when people could have done more. And that's something for me that I've had a hard time with in my career where I'm like, I need you to speak for me as almost like an ally because when it's coming from me or coming from a black person, we're always considered troublemakers and always considered, oh, there they go again. But it's not there they go again because, you know, and to be honest, when I play, I've never really experienced people being like outwardly racist to me, but I have had situations where it's almost like deep rooted inside of them that they don't even see it. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. And I think that's part of the problem. People think if they're not throwing bananas, they're not using the N word, then they're not racist when actually it can be a system of beliefs that you're upholding, um, which is purposely hurting black people. Now, Leanne, I know that before when you've mentioned football culture and you've spoken about different issues, you've mentioned a culture of silence and you, you alluded to it there. You needed people to speak up to up, needed people to speak up for you at certain times. What did you mean by that? Yeah, you know, obviously, I think it's obvious. Everybody knows what obviously any other Luca went through. And, and to be honest, that, that moment, it was a very, not a nice moment in anyone's life, to be honest. But when, you know, the players scored and they celebrated with Mark Sampson, for me, that is something that I've always felt, it still makes me sick to my stomach to think about now. And it's not something I necessarily shared with how that made me feel. But I don't think the girls realised how much that hurt myself, Eni and Anita. And it, it really made us feel, you know, it almost then became a them against us when it really didn't need to be that way. And that's something that I felt like I definitely think the girls could have done more in that situation. I don't hold it against them. But at the same time, this comes down to enabling and it comes down to the fact that those girls didn't think they'd be picked again if they went against him. But I just think, girls, please, why did you have to celebrate with him at that particular moment when you knew what was going on behind closed doors? Then after a few conversations I've had with the players, they say they didn't really know what was going on. So it's neither here nor there. But for me, how that made myself feel, I can only speak about myself. When I saw the players running over to Mark Sampson during that time was something that I'll never forget. And, you know, I've seen like, no animosity against the players, wishing them all the best of luck. But that's something that I don't think they realised made me and, and, and a couple of the other players feel extremely upset about. And that's something that I've always kind of thought about. And it's something that it's the only thing I really think about during that time, like, why did they need to celebrate with him after knowing what was going on? So that's something I feel like players could have definitely done more in that situation.